Hey there, uh, my name is Dan Totten. So this is my first semester of graduate school and I plan on following the library and information services track. Uh, for my project, I looked at tool libraries and more specifically how they catalog their tools. Uh, what's interesting to me is how do you catalog a thing for maximum information retrieval, especially within a catalog system that is specifically made for bibliographic classification. So, like, how do you catalog something like a file or a flathead screwdriver or a framing hammer um, at your, within, you know, your simple online catalog? So, uh, first off, I'll talk about what a tool library is. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. So, a tool library is simply an organization or a, a library that lends tools. Um, so they frequently operate with low cost membership fees, either annual or monthly, or uh, many of them just require you to simply have a library card. Users can rent out uh, a specific amount of tools for a duration of time, much like how people can rent out books. So the first lending libraries date back to the 70s from the West Coast. The most notable of these are the Berkeley Tool Library, which was developed through a uh, government grant and later incorporated into the Berkeley library system. Um, and while tool libraries have been historically connected to public libraries, there have many begun to proliferate in recent years. Uh, this can be credited to the popularity of such concepts as a circular or sharing economy, as well as the fact that special and affordable tool lending software allows for these projects to become considerably more feasible. Uh, in order to look at how these different types of libraries organize and retrieve information, I uh, compared several different public libraries' collections and how they uh, viewed their metadata, their online inventories with uh, specific tool libraries that use this special software. Um, I, or, and I compared their entries and how they catalog a cordless power drill. So if you were going to catalog something like this, there's certain, you, basically your metadata schema would include the specs or specifications of the tool. Uh, this can include the size of the chuck, which is in here. So the width of this is important to know in case uh, you need a certain drill bit, because only certain drill bits will fit inside of smaller chucks. So this is a half inch chuck, that's good to know. Uh, the variable speed too, that could be important. Uh, and also another thing that's important is the battery size. So this is a 20 volt battery. Um, that can be good in case you have other tools that use the same system um, and that compatibility is important. And it also says something about the, uh, what it can be used for. So in order to look into these, I'll just show you quickly two examples. Um, of tool libraries and how they organize information. Uh, the first one here is the Ilion Public Free Public Library. So we go here, let's say we wanted to look for a tool. So we can go to their tool inventory. Um, and you notice like this isn't how you organize books. Like it's simply, this is simply a alphabetical system. And we can scroll down here like, okay, I want a drill. All right. Well, drill cordless times two, DeWalt, 20 volt. Okay, this is pretty simple. It has most of the information one would need. So if we check the availability of it, you can come over here to the Mid York Library System and tool collection. So a single entry encompasses their whole tool collection of the Ilion Public Library. It has 244 items available. Um, and we can scroll down here and we see that each individual item is barcoded differently. So if you were approaching this material uh, through the catalog and not through the website, it would, the information is not necessarily too helpful. So this is tools drill. Um, that doesn't explain the size, it doesn't explain the voltage. So you'd really have to cross reference. And then furthermore, if we go back to this, um, so, uh, you know, in order for further information, contact the library. So that's 
so that's kind of evident there. All right, so and then we can also, we can contrast this with the Station North tool library, which is created using MyTurn software. If you notice, this is a little bit more hipper, like it's just a different organization, but we can go to tool borrowing, tool inventory, and this is what most tool libraries look like that um, are not connected to libraries. So they're by image. Um, they have type here. So education, interesting. Hobbies and crafts, lawn and garden. But let's find a corded, cordless drill. So if we search cordless drill, there it is, there's our first answer. So all of these look like cordless drills. So that's, that's a good sign. So we go here, um, we have the model, which you could Google and find out everything about it. Um, also, what's notable too is these tags, which can be helpful, and this classification. If we look at the image, okay, this will work well. So um, these are just two brief examples and there's really, uh, so all of these tool libraries basically follow um, a retrofitting of an old catalog or an adaptation of a new software. Um, and what both of these systems allow for is the accountability of an item, which is the most important. But um, it should be noted that information discovery online, while it is a very important thing, it's not necessary for a lot of these tool libraries previously because they've relied on in-person uh, exchanges so frequently. So going forward, it's an interesting question of, um, can you rely on that user interaction or will you have to create a better system uh, for information discovery online? So pretty, pretty enthralling stuff. Um, I hope you've enjoyed my little presentation and if you have any more questions, please comment. Thank you.